invite warmly our dear Umesh ji for continuing with the afternoon session. Namaste Umesh ji, over to you. Namaste, Manakkam. Hope we all are sharing the content of UHV with our student. Is there anyone sitting in this hall who has not started sharing the content with the student? Not teaching SIP, not teaching UHV2, have not done any sort of demo sessions in weekly meeting, Sunday PRP meeting. Is there anybody here? Yeah, but content sharing. Yeah, see, number one, sharing the content with the student, either in SIP or UHV2. Number two, shared the content in the weekly meetings, the university weekly meeting or the regional weekly meeting or Sunday PRP meeting. Okay. Is there anybody in this hall who has not shared the content with student yet? One, two, three, four. No volunteers meeting, you never have shared the content. No, no, I'm saying, I'm saying this three, any one of these three, any one of these three, if you are not done, right? Purnima Didi is one. Okay. <coughs> All right. So we have a lot of questions. And uh, in this particular session, we will try to uh, discuss, interact with our questions, particularly the questions related to how do I teach, how to teach, right, how to teach. So how do I share the values with the student, with faculty members, with my friends, with my family members, okay. So these questions we have, and in this session, we will try to find out some solutions for this question. I would like to share one of the incidents of my life. In from 12th of December to the 17th of December 2012, I did my first UHV2 workshop as a participant as a participant, the first UHV2 workshop, okay. By that time, my university had already taken the decision of keeping universal human value as the priority number one. And the director general of my campus, he wrote Ganesh sir that the beginning of the new semester, we want to start with a student workshop, okay, a student workshop for those elected student at the student council and he invited sir to come for that workshop. Then sir replied him that availability is not there, but you have one faculty in your campus and I am very much sure that faculty can take this student workshop, okay. And sir has recommended my name. And this workshop was supposed to start from 17th of February to 21st of February, 2013, right. And after doing my first UHV2 workshop, at the end of Jan December, I don't remember the exact date, but I think it was 30th or 31st, I got a call from sir and sir said that your director general would like to conduct the workshop for the student. So I said, that's very nice, sir, please do come. But he said that, no, you will take this workshop. Okay. I had no clarity on the concepts. Right, no clarity on the process and uh, had that lot of fear and I completely refused this. I said, no, sir, I cannot take the workshop. Then sir said, 
you can take the workshop if you need to have any sort of help like material powerpoint presentations will provide you i said okay the moment i hang up this call i told renu my wife you know what i'm going to conduct the workshop for the student you know what there are only this many resource persons for the uhv you know what so i was telling all these things so she said that okay all the best and then i made this target target of preparing myself and taking this five days workshop i had this almost one and a half months so i spend 9 hours minimum 9 9 hours a day preparing for myself conducting the sessions and after at least once or twice in a week i used to say this to my wife you know what so in one month she understood you know totally understood that i'm going to ask her you know what right you know what i'm going to conduct this workshop you know what i'm going to conduct this workshop just 3 days before my departure to bhutan from my hometown i again said you know what and then she asked me why do you want to conduct this workshop and the question was very simple why do you want to conduct this workshop so i said because i was told to conduct the workshop by my director general by you know ganesh sir so she said no why do you want to conduct this workshop i said because i was asked to conduct the workshop that's the reason i you know want to conduct she said no in the past one and half months at least 20 times you told me you know what so check your feelings why do you want to conduct the workshop she was also the participant with me during this uhu2 workshop right so that was her first workshop and my first workshop uhu2 then she just simply asked me you want to conduct the workshop because you think that people will start recognizing you as umesh ji yes of course that feeling was there in me that if i start sharing the content of uhv the people will recognize me as umesh ji because me and my wife saw ganesh ji you know in the campus and we saw that how people interact with them you know the people come and touch their feet so she asked me what do you think that are you like thinking that people will come and touch your feet and all these things i didn't say yes to my wife but that was going in me that was going in me and a deep gratitude for her on a very right point right time she draw my attention and then i got settled down and then i started thinking that why do i need to share the content and my whole focus has changed you know next day it took almost 10 12 hours to reach to the conclusion that why do i want to so i kept asking this question why and then finally i reached to that point i want to take this content for my development i want to share this content for to develop my clarity and not to impress anyone based on my personal experience i would like to tell you if this is our purpose we will develop as a resource person we will develop as a uhv teacher what is the purpose of sharing behind this content my development i want to get my own clarity right i want to be happy my students also wants to be happy and because i am 
related to my student i am just fulfilling my relationship with the students by sharing the content but if we are not aware of ourselves and somewhere that feeling is there that deeply deep down deeply rooted the feeling of sensation right if it is there then personally i believe that we will have a lot of hurdles in the process of developing ourselves as a uhv teacher as a uhv resource person because the content itself are like we all are listening to the content right the content are based on the harmony and if anyone who has got a little bit of clarity on the content and able to control the feelings can share the content and can impress the audience anybody anybody can impress the people right what you need just two things a little bit of clarity on the content and you need to control your feelings right with this we can do but with this we would not be developed sharing content is a part of volunteering and the volunteering is an efforts for the self development so this is very important right that i want to be happy for the reason i am taking efforts to under, understand the content why do i need to understand the content because that right understanding is happiness without understanding content which means without reaching to the state of a realization i would not be in a state of continuous happiness so i need to understand the existence i need to understand the harmony i need to you know understand the relationship and contemplation so this is the meaning of right understanding so i need to understand i need to understand because i want to be happy right i also need to understand because i want to live happily so this clarity and with this clarity we have the feeling of trust if this clarity is not there then there is also possibility what is this possibility i'll tell you what has happened i prepared now my shift has changed right with the different shift i went to the workshop i started conducting session with whatever the set of informations i had and i tried to control my feelings because one thing i have realized all these eight days whenever i was interacting with this resource persons team in the workshop hall outside the workshop hall i saw zero irritation so that has become a mantra for me as a uhv teacher you cannot irritate you should not irritate right you should not irritate so i kept saying myself okay share the content no irritation right children will ask the question no irritation but this mantra though my irritation was not being realized by anybody in that workshop hall but in the first 2 minutes of the session only i could understand that i am getting irritated yes first 2 minutes of the workshop but somehow i managed without bringing that irritation into my behavior for the 5 days but that was the most difficult part for me that was very very tough part for me you are getting this inner reactions and then you have to control your inner reactions that's a very difficult thing you know what has happened i said told the just in 2 minutes i just enter inside and i started sharing the content i said we are going to have this universal human values workshop for the 5 days and i congratulated all the students for getting elected as a council member and i said can we open up our discussion and the president of the student council he said why do we need to study the values that was the first question and i got irritated 
बिकॉज मी माय सेल्फ हैड नो क्लैरिटी दैट वाई आई डू आई नीड टू स्टडी द वैल्यूज इफ आई डू नॉट हैव दिस क्लैरिटी देन आई विल गेट इरिटेटेड then i'll tell you you know few more in what has happened in the first session in the first session some students who were sitting on this side some students who were sitting on that side and they were not paying attention on me so literally i concluded that they don't want to pay the attention and the moment i concluded that they don't want to pay the attention i had no courage to look at on this side and that side the whole first session went on i was looking only here because the student who were sitting in the front you know they were looking at me that feeling of trust is very important that they are not able to pay their attention they are not able to listen but they do want to listen if this clarity is not there if there is a lack of feeling of trust within so i know what has happened in my first class right literally after this lunch when i thinking of going back to the workshop hall and continuing with my third session of the day my body was literally shivering i was totally lost my control, you know confidence because all those feelings you know all that irritation all that doubts all that mistrust which was there in me i was able to see to it so one of the thing we can do while sharing the content is constantly looking at our own feelings it's very important if we are not able to look into our own feelings and if that feeling get disturbed then it may get communicated but if we are able to see to our feelings at least we can control it initially because that control is also required right and then we can work on it so gradually we develop this habit of working on the feeling and then gradually you know you have this subtle feeling within you but it's a journey at least in my case i am able to see that it's a journey right and it's taking a long time so this feeling of trust is important then number 2 you know it is student council members they are learned they are the top cream of our college but still they have such a small doubts small questions repeatedly they are asking the small questions if this things and this thing was going in me right this thing was going in me on the second day evening when i was talking to renu my wife and i said see this is what is happening and this thing i have never realized while teaching my management courses that the children have the same questions because in my my management co- courses they hardly used to ask the questions and even if there was any sort of question the model answer was there in the book right so the ans- you give the answer and the students are satisfied but here there are a lot of you know questions after questions if you say human being as the coexistence of self and body so they would say what is the meaning of self if you say self is a consciousness unit then they will ask you what is the meaning of consciousness unit if you try to bring their their attentions on the conscious activity of the self that desire thoughts and expectations are continuous then they will ask you what will happen to the self when depart the body because so many questions are there right when so many questions are there and i was not able to handle these questions that irritation was there i was talking to my wife and then my wife said if the same questions your own son would put all these questions to you what you will what you will do if your own child will ask you a question after questions what you will do what you will do
what you will do if your child keep asking you question 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 that's what my wife told me you know she said you are taking the student as the student and not as your children so that guidance the feeling of guidance will come only when we have this relatedness that affection that they are my children or at least you know they are a human being so that affection feelings that helps us to connect with that we will will be able to see this feeling of guidance in us so the feeling of trust and the feeling of guidance these two feelings are important for the teacher towards the student and the third is the feeling of respect okay the third important thing when i started taking my first workshop as i said you know what i thought number 1 i know everything so when i because i studied 9 hours a day lot of information lot of mugging up lot of scripts like lot of transcript lot of examples all these things so i know everything and with this idea i know everything i started sharing the content so i became teacher and you cannot share the content of uhv if you become teacher a teacher cannot share the content of uhv then what to do shall we resign the jobs a teacher cannot share be a student be a student be a co explorer take that very safe position that i am also a co explorer i have not become teacher yet you know becoming teacher of the uhv to me is reaching to the state of realization then i can say that i am a teacher then you know i can have this authority over the content of all all that i am sharing i can have that authority but till that point i am also exploring this content right i am not a teacher so this feeling is very important for each one of us that i am also a student and you are also a student you are trying to explore this content i am also trying to explore this content so let us explore together so that place of co explorer is the safest place for us from that place if we shift to the teacher's place then unknowingly we start imposing the things on the student and then we start saying that we should have trust rather asking that do you want to have the feeling of trust right? there is a big difference now if you say that you should have the trust then the children will ask yesterday i didn't submitted my assignment and you got red and white and blue so where was your trust sir correct so we can always have this clarity that i am a co explorer exploring the content take this content as a proposal when i'm taking this proposal when i'm asking you you want to have this feeling of relationship or opposition when we ask this question to the student simultaneously we should explore it within right when you explore these things within simultaneously with the students if you become the co explorer then that natural pause will come very natural pauses because you takes little time to explore you want to be happy or unhappy i'm connecting i'm exploring so that natural pause is coming and i'm i'm taking pause till the point i am settled with this proposals at least this answer do i want to be happy or unhappy okay
Any question here? No. Okay, good. So I shared that content. Five days has gone, right? What I shared was not basically the content of UHV. Hardly one percent of the content I shared. Ninety-nine percent. Lot of assumptions, lot of preconditioning, lot of do's, lot of don'ts. All these things has happened. So the two things are important. The one thing is the clarity of the content, and number two is the clarity on the process of the content. That this is the process of self-exploration. Okay. In my first workshop, there are few important concepts where I got my attention, and one of that was respect. Respect, okay, respect, and that was like one of my objective to share the content, to get the respect from the other. And then I slowly understood that you know respect is not getting, respect is not giving, but respect is basically being in the state where you can understand that the other is similar to you. Correct. in this workshop what respect i was expecting that has totally gone in a different way i could sense that the same student who used to respect me before for my management teaching they started disrespecting me for my value education teaching right so the students were the same the teacher was the same the content has changed and from respect to the disrespect now why did this respect to the disrespect happen because when i was teaching management that management was in my behavior correct my dress my style my everything was according to the management so they were they were easy for them it was easy to relate me with my subject content but i started teaching values so all that respect they had you know that that was gone and then that basically shaken me a lot and then the next 9 months of my journey has started and those next 9 months where i was in sort of an isolation i gone in in the state of isolation i lost my confidence right because if i say hello to my friend and the tone of saying hello if it becomes little harsh then disrespect <laughs> right if i say someone donkey disrespect right if i say someone oh, you are very good that very is disrespect over evaluation right if i say someone that you are bad again disrespect so i was so confused what to tell what to talk right every single word if i am communicating this respect or disrespect over evaluation under evaluation otherwise evaluation that lost my confidence next 9 months i was not comfortable talking to anybody in my campus those next those 9 months you know i was talking i was very comfortable talking to my student my family member and that's it i was living in the residential campus i literally started ignoring the people right if my faculty member would come from this side i would go on other side or i will you know take my cell phone i'll pretend that i'm talking to someone on the cell phone because that confidence was not there I totally lost the confidence and what i did for all these 9 months i had the recording of my uhv2 uh workshop all these 9 months whenever i got time listening to the content i just kept listening to the content in that 9 months period i attended 8 days residential workshop for minimum 5 times recordings listening to the recordings okay when i started listening to the recordings i also started looking within me that 
my point of attention is on the content or it is getting deviated so i guess two days ago i have given that exercise right writing a line if you are able to listen single line if you are not able to listen right so i started doing the same thing if i was able to listen i listen the moment i was not able to listen i pause it right again i brought my attention back to the content and i started listening to it so that helped me in understanding how many times i am taking taking take off now gradually i was able to understand that my point of attention on the content that has gradually increased and that 9 months basically helped me because every now and then i was listening listening to the content i read the book the foundation course on universal human values and professional ethics three times in this 9 months period and then gradually i could understand that the other is similar to me and gradually i started developing my confidence and i guess it took another 3 4 months i was back right back in a sense talking to the people very freely i was talking to the people but what i understood during this 9 months period number 1 to develop yourself as someone as a co-explorer to the share the value you need to devote the time you need to devote the time to understand the concepts you need to devote the time to see the realities experience that reality you need to conduct lots of experiments because every single experiments you conduct that increases your confidence so these are the things any question here so observe our feelings every moment that's important right the other wants to understand can understand right? this clarity is also re- required this is important thing right there is possibility that the other may have difficulty in grasping the concepts but i may also have difficulty in explaining the concepts okay we all are participating into uhv3 how many times we have asked this question to our own self that you want to be happy or unhappy what do you think how many times till today from our first introductory workshop till this moment how many times we asked this two question to ourselves how uh, you want to be happy or unhappy you want to live with the feeling of relationship or opposition many times means give me some number more than 50 more than 50 times in one workshop only you know we people ask you you want to be happy or unhappy <laughs> all those weekly with yeah that's what i'm saying how many times right from the first workshop till this moment 10000 10000 time okay she is saying 10000 will go with 1000 okay we'll go with 1000 how many times we understand i mean we listen to this word human being is the coexistence of self and body 100 times okay so 1000 times this proposal was being asked you want to be happy or unhappy you want to live with the feeling of relationship or opposition are we able to live with the feeling of relationship not always okay very good at least 100 times we listen to the proposal that the human being is the coexistence of self and body do we got the clarity on it do we got the clarity on it so please don't expect the child sitting in the classroom would get the clarity in one lecture only okay please don't expect <laughs> see if you start expecting my child should 
understand the human being is the coexistence of self and body, then you will start imposing. You will definitely try to convince the child. And in the process of convincing other, you are moving away from the process of proposals. Place it as a proposal. Help them to understand. Give some examples. Give some activities. Give some exercises. Try to draw their attention. If they are able to understand, it's fine. If they are not able to understand, they are exploring. We are also in the process of exploration. Let them to explore. Okay, let them to explore. So at least whenever we go to the next class, look into our current state that I have attended so many workshops, right? I read this book, I listened to the content for so many times, but still a lot of confusions are there in me. With that clarity, if I enter inside the workshop hall or if I enter inside the classroom, I am able to understand that they want to understand, but they will take time. Correct? Otherwise, if the child sitting in the classroom is not ready to accept the content at that particular moment, if that acceptance part is not there, if the child is rejecting the content, then we may get irritated. Okay? So, our current state and our desirable state. These two states are same or different? Different. In our current state, whole lot of different imaginations going on. There is a discipline, there is not discipline. Both the things are there in us. It's the same thing with our child. So they will remain disciplined sometimes. They can also break the discipline sometimes. Are we doing the same thing here in the classroom? So what we do in the workshop hall, the child is also going to do the same thing in the classroom. Is there anybody, any one of you from the first, I mean, let's take one session only. In one mm -hmm. session, do you remain seated only in the one position? So let the ch children sitting in the classroom to move. Okay. If they are looking here, if they are looking there, if they are putting their hand up, if they are putting their hand down, it is very natural. It is very natural, right? Otherwise, these are the common mistakes. We start preaching, we start imposing. With these two, if these two things doesn't work, then we start dominating. If this doesn't work, if the domination also doesn't work, then we start passing the judgment on the children. How many times I told you that we have to live with the feeling of relationship? Now this is passing a judgment, right? <laughs> this is passing a judgment. If they are wearing, you know, coming with some new dress in the classroom, then how many times I told you that physical facility, the need of the physical facility is limited. These are all passing judgment. I'm skipping few slides. These are common things, right? Number one, we have syllabus to cover. Number two, in a stipulated time. So it's important that start with the proposal. Like the proposal is human being is the coexistence of self and body. Okay? To understand this main proposal, we have sub proposals. What are the sub proposals? the need of the self and body, the need in time, right? the quantity, activity, response. So these are the sub-proposals. So every time we go on the sub-proposal, expand it, give some example to draw their attention and come back to the main proposal again. So these things are always required, right? coming back to the same proposal. If we don't come back to the same proposal, then the student will not be able to understand what discussions are going on. So if the discussions is going on on the happiness, 
de definition of happiness. If we stick to the proposal, the definition will go in the clarity with the student. But if we mix so many things in that, then the students will get confused. They will not be able to understand what have we defined today, whether it's a happiness we have defined or human being we have defined or we define the harmony in the family. Okay? It's important that the key points of the proposal with a pause, expanding the proposal and connecting to the proposals again and again. Okay? Hear any questions? How many of you have traveled by train? How many of you have traveled by train? A long train, two days, one day, minimum eight hours? Okay, everyone. Okay, everyone. You have traveled, right? Sir, sir. From where to where? Chennai to Delhi. Oh, that's a very long travel. The train from all the way from Chennai station to Delhi station, the train was on the track only? <laughs> that's why I'm here, sir. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, if, you, if we remain on the track, which means on the proposal, the children will be there and we also will be there. But if we miss the track then? If the train miss the track? My body and self will be different, it will not be in existence. No, anyway, they are there in the existence only, right? They are there in the existence. So that is very important, right? If the train loses the track, then what will happen? So if I lose the track in the class, which means if I'm not on the proposal and returning to the proposal, going to lose the track. Okay? So this is important to be on the track. All the time you have to be on the track. Who has traveled from Delhi to Chennai? Chennai to Delhi? Anybody here? One, two, okay, three, four. Traveling from Delhi to Chennai, who has gone on other railway station, get down to buy water, to buy fruits, juice, yeah, I was expecting. <laughs> At least 10, 10 station you would have done these things, right? <laughs> yeah, see, you, you started from Chennai, going to Delhi. The train stopped at one station, tell me the name of station. Vijaywada, okay? Train stopped at Vijaywada. You are thirsty, water is not there. Now you are outside the train to buy a bottle of water, right? The shop is on this side. The railway track is there, right? When you go to buy a bottle of water, you where you keep your focus? Why? If, if you are, you have asked for the bottle, right? And sometimes you give the money first because you will get the bottle quickly. So you have given the money, that person is not able to give you the water and the train starts. What you will do? Yamini Akka? Running? Yeah. It's the same thing. If someone is asking the question, don't remain on the question. Okay, don't remain on the question. The train is there, the track is there. And you have to complete, you have to take your content, right? So don't remain on the content. Come back to the station. So listen to the question. Listen to the question. Can, can I have one question? Any one question? Yeah. No, can you ask any questions from... Yeah. What 
No, I'm asking a question. Question based on the content. Yeah. See, question is that what would be the state of self during coma? Okay. What is the question? Listen to the question. Okay, listen to the question. Try to understand how much reality she is able to see. Try to understand what part of reality she is not able to see due to what preconditioning. So, what would be the condition of the self in the state of coma? So, she is able to see the reality that the self is there. But she is not able to see that reality that the self is continuous in time. Correct? That is the reason the question is that what will happen if the self is in coma? So, who is in coma? The self or body? That's it. Answer. Right? So, whenever, whenever student are asking the question, listen to that question very attentively. See that what part of reality the student is able to see, what part of reality they are not able to see, because of what preconditioning they are not able to see, and draw their attention on the preconditioning. Just simply ask them, the self is continuous or not? Then who is going in coma? The self or body? Right. Have I given any answer? Who got the answer? So, immediately and then running back to the station. Giving answer which means drawing the attention of the person on his natural acceptance. It starts with the preconditioning, draw their attention, bring them to the natural acceptance and leave it. Leave them, they will explore it. But then sometimes you know what happens? You yourself is not convinced with your own answer. And then you keep convincing by, by giving different, different examples, different, different dimensions, different, different style you use. So, let us have this clarity that I am not here to answer to the questions because this is a proposal. I am here to help, right? Help the student to explore within. Okay? Now, you have paid the money and the, just a minute half answer has given. You have paid the money and then this train started moving. What you will do? Very good. Keep the money there and rush to the train. If lot of discussions are happening, then okay. When we will discuss the existence, we will talk about it. So, let us keep it open. Because you are in the first session you are talking on the role of education in the holistic development and the child has a questions on the last chapter. That is not the place to answer to that question. But at that particular place, you can just give some little input. Just a little input to draw and the remaining questions can remain open. When you go to the existence chapter, again take that question and provide the complete input. Sir, um, actually we faced an incident regarding this UHV, uh, uh, a problem happened in the UHV class actually. Uh, one faculty was handling UHV class um, and uh, uh, some, uh, uh, some student, uh, he, did, uh, he does not uh, listen to her it seems. He was talking about something uh, who was sitting nearby him. So the UHV teacher, what she did, uh, she, uh, she told him to get up. Uh, why are you not uh, listening to the class? Uh, he didn't get up. She got angry. <laughs> she was telling two to three times, get up, get up. Still he didn't do. So she got temper, she got anger. She shouted like something in the class. Still he didn't. Uh, she told, get out from the class. I'll mark absent. Still he didn't get up. <laughs> So finally, uh, she just came out of the class and she uh, uh, came to the faculty advisor of that particular student and complained about that uh, the student is behaving like this when I was taking class. Then she called that student, uh, faculty advisor called the student, he came and uh, she asked why you are making some problem with ma'am. If she says to get up, why can't you get up like that? 
No, I didn't do anything wrong. Uh, I was just discussing about my DBMS project with uh, my friend or something. He's answering like that. Uh, so, uh, uh, this conversation is going on. This teacher is also getting angry. Faculty advisor is trying to compromise both of them. And uh, finally, that guy, what he did is like, while ma'am was teaching about um, happiness in phys... Actually, he is supposed to say ha happiness in physical facility. For mistakenly, he said happiness uh, with body, something like that. <laughs> Now the teacher got still she got angry like something she shouted stupid don't you know what to talk <laughs> did I taught you like happiness with body I am I was teaching happiness with physical facility uh, you didn't even know this like that she, she got too much of angry and finally <laughs> rather than compromising the student we just compromised the teacher please don't get tensed <laughs> they finally that faculty advisor came to me i am academic advisor for the second year students so uh, they came to me uh, finally i was compromising um, the faculty and i was telling just ask sorry to ma'am hereafter you won't do and uh, uh, separately, uh, I was advising to the student and um, uh, separately, I was uh, um, ad uh, advising to that faculty advisor, uh, you are taking UHV, actually you are supposed to be calm <laughs> over there. Like that, I was convincing both of them and uh, then finally, it got sorted out. So, uh, here UHV helped me. Actually, even though I didn't handle the UHV to the students directly. But anyway, if some problems come comes to me, I can able to handle with someone. Before I will get tens tension, I'll, I, me too will shout actually. Nowadays, okay. But I can also able to handle uh, such situations. So what you said now is like, we should not first get irritated while we are teaching UHV. Yeah. So UHV teachers has to follow it definitely. So next semester, you are <laughs> going to take the UHV. <laughs> That's not in my hand. There are some procedures here yes, to so allocate at the yes, subjects. So at, least, at least show your interest and take <laughs> UHV. Because it's really, when you take UHV, it helps us. You know, it's helped us to directly look into our feelings. It's helped us to directly explore these proposals within. And then we understand all the whole process. But see, yeah, what you have said, that's absolutely right. We have to look into our feelings, right? every now and then, every single moment, whether my feelings are getting disturbed in my classroom, they are not getting disturbed in my classroom. See, getting recognized as a UHV teacher is a tough job. It's a very tough thing. If you are getting recognized as a UHV teacher in your campus, then it is a very tough job for you. You know why it is a very tough job? Because in the campus, at, there are some places where the CCTV cameras are installed and your behavior is getting captured in the CCTV camera. But in the campus, there are lots of places where the CCTV camera are not installed, but your students' cameras are there. And your students' cameras are not only in the campus, but they are outside the campus too. So there is possibility that your students are observing your city behavior also and your behavior in the movie hall also, your behavior in the garden also, right? your behavior in the market also. There is always possibility that your students are there right? and they are observing my UHV teacher. So if that effort doesn't get communicated to the students, at least, you know, I'm not able to live with it. I'm not able to live with the value completely, but at least my teacher is taking that efforts. If that efforts get communicated, they will have the feeling of glory for you. You know, they will have this feeling of gratitude. What you said? Yeah. That's what, not in the college, but in home also. Yeah, is this your UHV? Yeah, why this, you know, yeah, you know, at home also we are facing this problem. Do you know why we are facing this problem? Because in the first introductory workshop, we heard these words and we started using these words in the family. 
we started imposing these things on the family physical facility or relationship my cupboard itself is full of dresses right and i'm asking them to physical facility or aya bhaiya i want to share something that happened in my class bhaiya like like uh, for the same set of students i have taken data structures in algorithm subject in the next semester itself i'm taking uhv class like that is full of uh, algorithms and things and concept oriented and like now i am going to start with uhv after completing my uhv2 i am taking this uhv2 in the class like uh, the classes were going on fine it was very well going on and one fine in the middle of the semester i asked the students to write like what are the changes that you could feel in that you have to write like three points you write it and in the first row and in the second row some of the students were sitting simply and they were staring at me like i asked why you people are simply sitting write something like you you might have changed something in some point you might have uh, felt that changes no mom it's not the changes in me it's the changes it's in you mom we could feel it like last semester when you come for the club we didn't even talk to you like this and all this semester and also please keep the charm in you mom because it's very charmful to you on seeing like this like that this on the same day i couldn't even feel it that i have changed like that like and on the same day evening i gone to man seeing the mirror like did i did i change very charmfully like <laughs> i got the thing what happened to me i don't know what happened really this is the first incident and the second in this incident i have shared in our uh, meeting also like in a department uh, uh, uhv meeting like uh, that uh, like uh, second incident was uh, that was the harmony in the family that the uh, topic i was taking and i asked the students to take out the paper and start writing their family members name and uh, they started writing the family members name and uh, after a few minutes i stopped them okay have you all done with the uh, writing or oh, yes they said yes we have done it mom like that they said and i asked the question like uh, how many members are there in the family of minimum you tell me and everyone has was telling like four three like that they were telling okay how many of you have left your grandparents name like that i asked and one one guy really fe- uh, got tears in his eye i feel regret ma'am i i i love love my grandparents very much but i didn't uh, included my name here when you asked for writing the family members name really i felt regret that is i feel regret for it ma'am like that he got he got his tears okay leave it ma'am no problem the next question i'll ask you like i asked the next question how many of you have written one to your father's parent how many of you have not written your grand uh, mother's parents and while discussing on these things now i got a doubt that what my children will write if i ask the same question to them on the same day evening i've done it like my uh, husband's um, uh, parents are no more but my uh, my parents are there so i asked them to write the same thing what the students had did the same thing my children also written only our four member that is our family members like mine husband and and uh, the siblings name they have written that's it they left over my father's that is parents name because other the fa- uh, that is husband's parents also they are supposed to write but they didn't and i started educating them that they are not here or not whatever it may be if somebody is asking you about the family surprisingly some of the students have written even the pet names like uncle aunty everybody's names they have written and uh, for my children i started educating that you have to include your family members name like this like whoever you feel like family those names should be included you should you should not keep in mind like that we four are together as a family this has changed me a lot like i started thinking every moment like this is happening and when i take the uhv two classes it stop that is i got a change got change in myself a lot i was started exploring uh, to the contents thank you so much ji <laughs> yeah you know that's how we get benefited and that should be the purpose of sharing the values my benefits my development my my transformation right and then with all these small small efforts we take the children are able to notice to do it they have this feeling of glory our own attention gets drawn on many things and then we start experimenting on you know all those many things so it's not only is helps in my personal transformation but in the transformations of the family too right now let us say like this is one of the main focus slide of 
first session itself the role of education these three things are there right understanding relationship physical facility right? so these are the three key points we can give a small example of what the key point right understanding the small example of key point relationship a small example of key point physical facility that what is the relation right understanding so something which is right and always right for you and for everyone is right understanding it could be lots of definitions of right understanding but this is a very initial stage so through such sort of proposals we are also help drawing their attention that there is something which is right for everyone so that is the right understanding okay what is the relationship so the feelings when you have in you you are comfortable with them those are the feeling of relationship what is physical facility the things which are materialistic in nature right these are physical facility now what you think do you want to know all those things which is right for you and right for everyone do you want to have this feeling of relationship in you do you need this physical facilities right asking this taking pause exploring within helping them to explore if all these three things are required then what should be the priority number 1 number 2 number 3 this way we can slowly proceed rather than saying that physical facility is the priority number 1 which means we are concluding so let them to conclude you know we can help them so that they can conclude and then we draw the conclusions and we can also ask them to draw the conclusion now if the child would ask right understanding is the priority number 1 and everybody is saying that right understanding is the priority number 1 why relationship is not the priority number 1 why not physical facility <coughs> tell me if a student would ask why right understanding is the priority number 1 why not relationship for me relationship relationship is the priority number 1 have we discuss on the relationship in the classroom while this content is going on can we give such answer we can draw the attention of the student and we can provide the input only on the content delivered and not from the content yet to be delivered if i say that the relationship is now losing the track will never go to delhi will never go to delhi because now the whole discussions will happen on the relationship and they will say that no relationship is not reason the self is not discussed yet harmony is not discussed yet where we are here in the very first chapter so if this is the question of the student why not relationship because relationship is important so relationship is the priority number 1 bhai i have one question yes bhai apart from syllabus uh, what are the activities or uh, projects we can give in uhv for students we'll talk about it we'll go on the syllabus through the syllabus first i'm asking you a question if you are teaching this we will definitely talk about it you know if we are teaching this in the classroom if the slide is here we are asking them to set the priority order 1 2 3 4 they set this priority like right understanding is number 1 relationship is number 2 physical facility is number 3 but if one of the students say why not relationship as the priority number 1 because relationship is very important
See, when the student is asking such sort of questions, which means, again, listen to the question. What is the issue now? The student is not able to understand what is the meaning of priority. So, student is not asking the questions related to which one of these three should be the priority number one. That is not the student's question. The student's question, the student is not able to understand what is the meaning of priority. So, if you have this, this, then you will be able to do these two things very naturally. So, that is why the right hand holds the priority number one. Okay. So, we have to listen to the questions, draw their attention and help them to explore. These are some of the activities, right? For example, we can ask them to write down their aspiration. We do this thing in UHU1. The first lecture of SIP is this. We ask them to write down their aspirations. We ask them to write down their achievements. We ask them to write down their all the different concerns. Okay? The same list, this list is very important because the same list is being referred in every next sessions of the SIP. All the discussions built up on this particular you know, list. Then this is how we can draw their attention. At very initial stage, yesterday someone was saying, I think Kohai did, yeah, in the while lunch only. For them, what, you know, what do the student want? If you ask them what you want, what will be their answers? Your mic, she has, she has shared all these things too. This is how the student replies. What they so, say? what is your aspiration? I want to get a job which pays me a lot of uh, money. Right. Yeah. So, they say that we want to have a job will, which will pay me a lot of money. Right. I want to have mobile. Right. I want to have car. I want to have big bungalow, big building. Right. All these things. The students are saying this thing. Then, now what to do? What to do now? So, what to do? Yes. Yes, and the student will reply yes. Yeah. They will say yes. So, Gauri Bhaiya, this is the activity. Yes, Bhaiya. Right? So, when, when such sort of discussions are going on, when such sort of discussions are going on, we can mix this sort of activity. Like, okay, right, what you want to become, why you are studying to become something. For example, engineer. After becoming something, what you will do? You will do something. What? Building bridges. By doing something, what you will get? Now you will get your salary, you will get your money, you will get your mobile, all these things, right? Is this enough or you want to be something? So what do you want to be? So doing such sort of exercise, we can help them to understand that there is a difference between becoming something, doing something, getting something and being something. And what we want to be, that is the most important thing for you. Because even by becoming something, what you want to be? By doing something, by getting something. So you always want to be something. What you want to be, let us explore. So if exercise, this exercise will help them to understand quickly 
that they want to get money but getting money is not enough they want to be happy now we can ask this question to them with money can you be happy in continuity now the place you have created okay so we have to create the place for the questions without creating the place if you put the questions for the exploration they will not be able to connect so again losing the track so being on the track which means creating the place you know going from station to station station to station right wherever the train need to be stop stop there some stations are there where the train doesn't stop pass the station so that is how we can remain on the track so we can develop many activities like this and all these different activities and exercises are given at the end of the every chapter in the book so read the book at the end of every chapter exercises are there activities are there right all these things are there some projects are also there descriptions of the projects are also being given what sort of sort of projects we can do like yesterday uh in in the evening meeting we were talking with srm core group right srm core, core group so one of the project i conducted during my you know sharing values in university with the university student uh we had this 30 marks uh, projects mini project for 30 30 marks so i float an idea of eco friendly and human friendly projects to them so i said number one the project should not be only in written format and then you are submitting but you need to do it right that's the one thing number two if you are saying that eco friendly project which means the nature should not harm get harmed by any way any means human friendly projects which means while doing the projects you will behave with each other keeping the feelings of the relationship at the center so that is the meaning of human friendly okay the third thing i said you will not bring money from anyone so no donations you will get for this no fundings the next you will not put your own money to and do this projects okay of course it needs lots of discussions after minimum 5 to 7 round of discussion i had this idea in me right i had the whole road map in me but then it need to be enter into the thoughts of the students then only they will be able to do it so to bring the thought related to this projects we had lots of discussions and then slowly they understood that the campus need to have certain sort of infrastructure and they can take the infrastructure building as a projects the national highway of bhutan passes through the my campus right and there was no bus stop so in the rainy season people waiting for the bus they always had a difficulty so two groups have taken project of building a bus stop this much big bus stop they only built like this much of dais at least 10 people can be there under the shade and that was the maximum you know people waiting for the bus there maximum time but issue is that eco friendly so what material we can use then what will be the material for the eco friendly building yes only natural material so cement is not natural cement is not natural right in many villages of tamil nadu even in many villages of kerala if you see the houses 
you will find that they are totally constructed in wood by using leaves, fruits and the branches. Right? They also used the same thing and they constructed it. But they didn't cut a living tree for that. They collected wood from the dead, dead tree and they constructed it. Okay? Another project like there was a uh, water lake in our campus and that lake was very dirty right? and nobody used to go there. So the two groups have taken the project of cleaning the water lake. Not only they have cleaned the water lake but they constructed wooden benches and the wooden umbrellas so the people can sit there. So the same place where hardly anybody used to go before, that place has become a nice place for, for the hangout. So the families, you know, they started going there, sitting by the lake. Students also started, you know, going there to study. This is another. So such sort of projects we can give, right? Such sort of projects we can give. Now this also develops their competence, confidence basically. The group who constructed the bus stop, they said that now we don't worry about our houses. We can construct our house. I can construct my house. See, such a big confidence. Okay? So, such sort of projects we can give, Gauri Bhaiya. We are teaching UHV, that's good. These are the UHV projects. If we are not teaching universal human values, then in our core subjects also, we can have such sort of creativity to give projects, many projects and assignments to the students which will be based on values. So from value education, the next move is value based education. So we can start preparing for that second move also, the value based education. I can teach value based economics, value based mathematics, value based you know, accounting, value-based management. Like, I'll, I'll just share you a small example, a very small example. Teaching this subtraction to the, to the child, that 5 minus 2 is equal to, right? We write something. Now see, you had this 5 mango to fulfill your relationship with your brother, who was hungry, you shared two mangoes. How many mangoes are there with you now? Correct? What is happening? You are teaching them 5 minus 2. But then what you are teaching them? Right? You are teaching the values. You are teaching values. You are teaching values to them. So this is called value based mathematics. Now you are teaching mathematics only, but the value based mathematics. Tomorrow Papa will bring two ice cream. Okay. You and your sister is there. How you will divide this ice cream? Ask them. If there are two packets of ice cream and Papa will bring these two packets of ice cream to you, how you will divide it? Equally. So what you are saying you are not sharing basically right so how you will share this ice cream equally they will say one one and now if papa brings ice cream tomorrow they would have that thought what sharing one one and they will share so this is the meaning of value based education so what are the subjects we are teaching engineering, medical, traditional sciences, we can bring the values into all of our lives. Other question? Is this okay? Now the third important thing, for example, natural acceptance is written there. And the student asks, what is the meaning of natural acceptance? So it's an innate and invariant faculty. Right? What is the meaning of invariant? 
the universal remains same in time, place, and people. For example, relationship or opposition. Correct. So when we are asking this question, appropriate example, if we are giving, that appropriate example will help student to explore. But if you ask this example, right? Like what is naturally acceptable to you? Dosa or idli? What is naturally acceptable to you, Gauri Bhaiya? Dosa or idli? Didi? Ranganatham Bhaiya? Idli or dosa? Dosa. Universality has gone. Why? Why the university, it has gone? Because the example itself is wrong. Right? Example itself is wrong. The natural ex natural acceptance is to get the clarity on what to do. But you are giving the examples of how to do. Right? So, when we are giving examples, we have to be very mindful. Relevant, appropriate example to help student to explore. Otherwise, if we are confused with the examples, then that, that will create a confusion. Okay? Another important thing, this examples and story, are they part of the content of EHV? No. So, that can be shared just to draw the attention. I remember in one of the university, when that university was thinking of launching UHV 2, and then, you know, we said that these many, at least these many student, I mean, faculty development programs are required. And a very senior dean of that university who was there in the meeting, he said, why do you need so many faculty development program? It's value, right? So, we can teach value without even any sort of training program. We know the value. So, we can teach. Teaching the concepts of universal human value does not mean teaching stories in the classroom. It is not a storytelling class. It is not a class where you can teach Ramayan. It is not a class where you can teach Gita. It is not a class where you can teach Bible. It is not a class where you can teach Quran. It is not a class where you can teach Gandhi. It is not a class where you can teach Nehru. The values of Bible are important. The values of Gita are important. The values of Ramayana are important. The values of Mahabharata, the values of Quran, the values of Guru Granth Sahib, all these values are important, very important. But when we are taking universal human values, the content has to be universally accepted and not be based on any cultures, any creed, any religion or any person. Then only it will be a universal human value. So teaching UHV is not a story telling classroom. Examples has got its importance. But those examples, again, has to be very appropriate. You have just 30 seconds. Yeah, because I have only one minute. Yeah, one, one minute. Because uh, just now you had been telling, I remember it from April 8 to 12, we had uh, UHV2. And in that, uh, you were telling, but uh, I wanted to talk to you. <laughs> I didn't find time. Uh, as an example, you were telling, if one slaps on one face, will you show the other face? According to our scriptures, it is, If one slaps on one face, you have to show the other face to them. 
this is what i had been taught and uh, so many things in the holistic human health we have uh, dr alvin sir was there so at that point of time i just wanted uh, not to intervene uh, because immediately i got it uh, when you were explaining and giving an example like that i thought okay we will not but now once you have told no scriptures no qurans no nothing but most of the examples that day you were narrating about uh, buddha yashodara etc why can't we also give some examples on this part better me let me let me clarify that example was not given by me wait 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 let me clarify that question was being asked by her okay and then that question was that person has left left the family okay so in that question the the questioner brought buddha the questioner brought buddha so it was my responsibility to bring the attention of the questioner about the whole context so i just has given the whole context but towards the end i also said there is possibility that when i or when we reach we are about to reach to the state of a realization we may get temporary cut off but that getting temporary cut off is not basically cutting off from the family and then i also given the reference that later on when yashodara would understood that he has reached to the feeling of love okay but uh, okay so, this so i accept participants it. can ask the question yeah this i can accept it but the on the uhp2 when you told that immediately my reflection was on that part so how can i take it for him yeah in the uhp2 this this question was being asked and answering to this question what i said that if someone slept on my one side i will not give other slide to the other person that was my answer no but according to my belief yeah, and my wait a minute what was my answer if someone slept on my one side i will not give my other side to the other person i will try to hold his hand and after holding his hand i will ask that person are you happy or unhappy right i will ask that person to check the feeling i will ask that person that do you want to live with the feeling of relationship or opposition you know what does it means it means i will if i am able to see that the other person is in disharmony so it is my responsibility to ensure that complementarity with the other person for the for his or her development so that i will do you know that i will do that that's what i said shall i take one minute can we take one minute we already crossed if minutes. it is not so then yeah. no issue yeah one minute you can take yeah. your complimentarity that's all it is fine um <clears throat> if the other one is unhappy and if the other person wants to beat on the <clears throat> slap on the other face also what will be your reaction yeah i said i will hold the hand right yeah you hold, you will hold the hand and you will ask whether you are happy or unhappy if the person uh, says uh, he answers he or she yeah i am unhappy i just wanted to slap you again then what will be your reaction you will show your other face or still you will go on with the i that's the reason you know listen to my answer what i said i will hold the hand that two covers, hands are there yeah that covers everything right that covers everything listen to it then it is not in harmony na you are controlling the other person that's what that's what i'm saying i will hold the hand i will hold the hand that means i will not allow anybody to behave as per their whims and wishes okay that i'll talk teach, to you in person yeah, teaching value doesn't means that you are compromising with teaching value which means you are understanding and living with your participation here also we are not allowing anybody to do whatever you want to do right we are drawing your attention every now and then we are drawing your attention 
See, Bhaiya is sitting there, your every single movement is also getting registered there. If you are moving out, sign. If you are coming in, sign. So we are not allowing you to go any anywhere, any time from this classroom, but with the feeling of relationship. With that clarity that you also want to know and I also want to know. With that clarity that you also want to be happy and I also want to be happy. Right? That clarity is there at the base. That is the meaning of holding hand. Right? That is the that that's the meaning of holding hand. So if you will do this, I will definitely hold your hand. But I will also try to look into my feelings and I will also ask you to check your feelings. Are you happy? Are you unhappy? Right? So this is very important for us when we go to take our classes, look un into our feelings, observe the feelings continuously and then interact with the children. Observing feelings and interacting with the children, the content clarity, for that content clarity, one time reading, one time attending workshop, one time listening to the audio is not enough. At least for me, it was not enough. For me, it is not enough. I take a lot of readings, right? So that's where, you know, we can develop. Answering to the questions again, not basically answering to the question, but bringing attention of the student, helping them into the exploration. Example, the contents are universal. We can also try to give a universal examples which are appropriate and relevant. And this is not a storytelling class, right? If you look at the guidelines of universal human values, the guidelines is universal, rational, verifiable and leading to the harmony. So when we place this content, we should follow the guidelines of universal human values. Another important thing, all these slides, materials are being given by UHV team through NCCIP. So this material is open for all to download. But please, please do not change the material, right? These slides have been prepared after conducting a lot of, lot of research and lots of discussions. Even if we want, if we want to change one single word on this particular slide, change that one single word, we conduct minimum two, three hours discussions we try to see what is the meaning of that word. See that word is not only for that particular slide, but that word is meaning of the whole existence. Right? Because it is indicating some sort of reality. So please don't change the slides. Don't change the slides. Don't change the material. Don't do the editing. Don't delete anything. Right? If you want to do some, some, some sort of editing, if you want to delete something, please send that suggestions to us. That this slide, this something is missing out, can we add it? We would definitely welcome you. We'll have a discussion and if it is appropriate, we will do that additions. Okay? Thank you. Ji.